Well, welcome back to part B here. So we're going to wrap up lesson 15 and we're still in section 7.2. Find all solutions of the equation where the cosine of 2 theta is equal to a half. So notice what we've changed from part A to part B is now we're not just messing with just theta or beta or alpha in here. Now there's a value in there. So what I want you to do is put your finger over this. You don't want this 2 theta to influence your first move. What angles have a cosine of 1 half? And so I leave this blank. I, I don't let that influence you. You should be thinking quadrants, where's cosine positive? Well, that's the point of quadrants 1 and quadrant 4. And you should be thinking 60 degree angles. So pi over 3 plus 2 pi n and 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n represent all possible angles whose cosine is 1 half. All right? So don't let the 2 theta influence this first move. Now stick 2 theta equal to pi over 3 plus 2 pi n and 2 theta equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Now we're just in algebra 1 move away. Just divide both sides by 2. So I divide the first one by 2. I get pi over 6 plus pi n and 5 for pi over 6 plus pi n. These are the values of the angle. All right? Again, and then we're going to double the angle and then the cosine of that doubled angle will be 1 half. So for instance, if you let n be 0, this would produce pi over 6. You put pi over 6 in for theta. You would double it. Would it would be pi over 3. Oh my gosh, it works. Cosine of pi over 3 is a half. Same thing here. This produces an infinite number of values of theta that makes this a true statement. Now granted, every time you put theta in, you're going to double it, and then its cosine will be 1 half. All right, now this one says 2 sine 3h equals square root of 2. Now the first thing we've got to do is isolate the function. And you can't do anything about the 3. Please don't factor the 3 out. Just leave it for the right here. And so divide both sides by 2 and you get the sine of I don't care is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Don't let the 3h influence you. So I say the sine of I don't care is equal to, hey, I'm thinking 45 degrees. And I'm thinking 45 degrees in quadrant 1 and I'm thinking 45 degrees in quadrant 2 and 2 pi is the period for sine, and 2 pi is the period for sine. And so I'm going to put 3h in here, I'm going to put 3h in here, I'm going to divide by 3, and I will have solved for my variable. So 3h equals pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, and 3h equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. So now I have as an algebra 1 move, divide both sides by 3, and I have solved for the value of h that makes this a true statement. And when you divide by 3, you can multiply by 1 third. That might, that might make more sense to some of you. So I'm going to divide by 3. So I triple the denominator. I divide by 3. There you go. Now here's something interesting. 2 pi over 3. That is the period of this function. Remember period? Period was 2 pi over b. And that's b right there. Hey, look. That will always be, that will always be your period of the function. This function happens to be sine 3h. You can think of it as sine 3x. And if I asked for the period, you would do 2 pi over b or 2 pi over 3. This will always be the period of the function. All right. Well, how about tangent 7x equals negative 1? Well, first of all, I don't let the 7x influence my first move. Uh, let's see now. Negative 1. Tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. Tangent has, is, has a tangent of 45 degrees is 1, so I wanted either 3 pi over 4 or I could have gone with 7 pi over 4, but we usually stick with 3 pi over 4 because it's the first one. So 3 pi over 4 plus pi n represents all possible angles whose tangent is negative 1. All right? Again, n can be positive or negative integers, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And this produces an infinite number of angles whose tangent is negative 1. I set 7x equal to it, and then I divide both sides by 7, and I'm done. And you get the ever so convenient 3 pi over 28 plus pi over 7n. Yeah, now normally the tangent curve has a period of pi, but if you put a 7 there, it ends up with a period of pi over 7, and Lord knows I don't want to graph that. All right, square root of 3, secant 5t plus 2 equals 0. I think we need to get the 2 over by subtraction and divide by square root of 3. So let's do that first. You can't get rid of the 5 here. You can't factor it out. You can't do anything. I'll tell you what I want to do, though, is I want to turn this into cosine. Notice I don't take the reciprocal of, in, of the angle. You'll never take the reciprocal of the angle. I don't care if it's a fraction in there. Leave it alone. 
So, all right, don't let the 5T uh, bug you here. What angles have a cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2? All right, you should be thinking quadrants 2 and 3. You should be thinking 30 degree angles. And so 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Those are the two angles between 0 and 2 pi that have a cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2. And then by writing it this way, this represents all the possible angles whose cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2. Now I'm going to put the 5t in, and now I'm going to divide by 5. And so my final answer is pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, 2 pi over 5n, excuse me, and 7 pi over 30 plus 2 pi over 5n. And again, if I asked for the period of the cosine of 5x, you would do 2 pi over 5. Oh, look at it right there. This is always the period of the function. This is always the period of the function. Now here you just have to deal with the fractions. I know you guys hate fractions, but this really was 5 pi over 30 and that reduced to 5 pi over 6, and this was 7 pi over 30 and it didn't go anywhere. But this represents the values of t that make this a true statement, because you're going to end up multiplying it by 5, and then the cosine of that angle will be negative square root of 3 over 2. I know this is exciting, isn't it? Square root of 3 cotangent 1 4 t equals 1. I'm going to divide both sides by square root of 3. You need to isolate the function first. You can never do anything about what's in here. Then I'm going to turn this into tangent by taking the reciprocal of both sides. Notice I didn't take the reciprocal of the angle because you never take the reciprocal of an angle. Uh, angles whose tangent is square root of 3. Uh, let's see now. I, I need to be in quadrants 1 and quadrant 3 and I should be thinking 60 degrees but I only need one of them because the tangent has a Remember, period of pi, and the two angles are exactly pi uh, ratings off each other. It was pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So I use pi over 3 plus pi n. Now I put the 1 4 t in there, and now I multiply both sides by 4. And my final answer is t is equal to 4 pi over 3 plus 4 pi n. This produces an infinite number of values of t that makes this a true statement. Or you can go here if you wanted to. Either one would be fine. Okay, now they get a little bigger. Cosine 4x minus pi over 6 equals a half. But I still don't let what's in the parentheses influence me. Look at your first move. Pi over 3 plus 2 pi n and 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. I don't care about the 4x minus pi over 6. Pi over 3 has a cosine of a half. 5 pi over 3 has a cosine of a half. So then I set it equal to 4x minus pi over 6 and 4x minus pi over 6. Now this is a two-step algebra equation. You did this 100 times. We're going to add pi over 6 to both sides, and then we're going to divide by 4. So add pi over 6 to both sides. It only combines with the pi over 3 and the 5 pi over 3. These are unlike terms, so the 2 pi n has to stay there and just goes along for the ride. Okay, so pi over 3 plus pi over 6 is 3 pi over 6, because um, I made that 2 pi over 6. Over here, I made this 10 pi over 6 plus pi over 6. That's 11 pi over 6. Uh, and then I, uh, I probably skipped a step here. I don't know. This is really pi over 2. 3 pi, 3 pi over 6 is really pi over 2. When I then divided by 4, I ended up with pi over 8 plus 2 pi over 4, which reduced to pi over 2. Over here, I divided by 4. Or again, you can multiply by 1 fourth. And 11 pi over 6 times 1 fourth is 11 pi over 24. And again, this would have been 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. But this pi over 2, this is interesting. The pi over 2 is the period of the function. Look, the period of cosine is normally 2 pi. And period is 2 pi over b. And if you took 2 pi divided by 4, which we just did, right? We just divided by 4, you would get pi over 2. This always represents the period of the function. And this convoluted answer here represents all values of x that make that a true statement. All right, now cosine squared equals a half. This is kind of a unique one. Uh, so I have to take the square root of both sides. Now when I do that, I have to introduce plus or minus, because remember, cosine could be positive or negative, and then when you square it, you would end up with a, you'd end up with a positive. So I'm taking the square root of both sides, which is square root of 1 over the square root of 2. Uh-oh, you know this. You know this. This is 45 degrees. Now my question to you is, where is cosine positive or negative? And in the interval 0 to 2 pi, this happens in all four quadrants. Because cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. And cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. 
So when you have a plus minus here with cosine or sine or tangent, this is happening in, in all four quadrants. So the question is, how do you represent this? Well, your first answer would be pi over 4 plus pi n, 3 pi over 4 with 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. This right here would knock out pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 because those are both, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 are both pi ratings apart. I don't need to write all four of these plus 2 pi n. This takes care of the first one and the third one. Now 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 are across from each other also. This represents the second one. I, I'm sorry, the second and the fourth one. I like this answer. I'll tell you why. Because if you were to graph cosine squared, it's periods pi. And I love this one. However, there was a only when you describe the four 45 degree angles, there's a little better answer. And the fact is, if you draw this out, you will see that they are exactly 90 degrees apart. So you could write this as pi over 4 plus pi over 2n. It's your decision. I, I like this answer because this, again, I like the fact that pi is the period for the cosine squared. But I do understand that the most concise answer, and this only happens, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing sine, cosine, or tangent, this only happens when you're trying to describe all four of the 45s. You can write it in one statement. If you want to write all four of the 30s or all four of the 60s, it will take two statements to do that. Oh, this, is a, this, is, this really harks you back to Algebra 1. 2 sine t plus 1 times cosine t equals 0. Well, when you multiply two coins and get 0, one of them has to be 0. What do we do? We just set these equal to 0. I mean, you're used to seeing, what, x minus 4 times the quantity x plus 2 when you set them equal to 0. Same thing. Set this term equal to 0. Set that term equal to 0. Well, what would you do here? You subtract 1 and divide by 2. And so sine t equals negative 1 half and cosine t equals 0. When is sine t negative 1 half? Oh, here we go. This happens twice. It happens at 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. When's cosine t 0? Well, now this happens twice also. This happens at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. But I only need one statement to describe that. Now, remember, I told you, on the quadrilaterals, all bets are off. But cosine normally has a period of 2 pi. But because cosine is 0 at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, you only need one statement to describe it. That describes both pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Again, because n can be positive or negative 1, 2, 3, or 4. So 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n takes care of sine t equal negative a half. Pi over 2 plus pi n knocks out all the angles whose cosine is 0. Oh, we just keep making these up, don't we? All right, 3 cosecant squared alpha minus 4 equals 0. So what are you going to do here? Well, you're going to add 4 to both sides. You're going to divide by 3. And then you're going to take the square root of both sides and the reciprocal of both sides. And it won't make any difference what order you do that in. And so I added 4 divided by 3. And then I went ahead and took the reciprocal of both sides. Uh, and, and you don't have to do it in this order, but I, I like this. Sine squared equals, just take the reciprocal. The reciprocal of cosecant is sine. The reciprocal of 4 thirds is 3 fourths. Now the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus square root of 3 over 4. So that's plus or minus square root of 3 over square root of 4, which is plus or minus square root of 3 over 4. Hey, you know this. So this, is this, this is all four of the 60s. So in the interval 0 to 2 pi, all four 60s are pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. But i got to tell you, pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 are right across from each other. And 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 are right across from each other. And what I mean by that is they're only separated by pi. So pi over 3 plus pi n takes care of pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And 2 pi over 3 plus pi n takes care of 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And that's the most concise answer. And as I told you before, you could use different angles to start the parade here. But we normally just grab the first ones we can find. Oh my gosh, look at this. 3 tangent squared, 4 beta minus 1 equals 0. Well, first of all, I hopefully right away you recognize that we want to add 1 to both sides and divide by 3. So get, a, get the function isolated. You can't do anything about the 4. Take the square root of both sides, and so that's going to be plus or minus square root of 1 third, which is plus or minus the square root of 1 over the square root of 3. All right, now think about this. Well, what angles have a tangent of 1 over square root of 3? You should be thinking 30 degree angles. And because it's plus or minus, it's all of them. So it's pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Now pi over 6 
and 7 pi over 6 are right across from each other, as are 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So 4 beta equals pi over 6 plus pi n, and 4 beta equals 5 pi over 6 plus pi n. Notice I didn't let the 4b influence me. I did not let the 4b influence me. And so we end up with um, beta equaling pi over 24 plus pi n, pi over 4n, excuse me, and 5 pi over 24 plus pi over 4n. That's not too bad. Oh my god, are we done? This concludes part B of lesson 15. So having watched part A and part B, you now are more than willing and able to go on and finish the homework for lesson 15.